Westinghouse and Airship Industries have dedicated themselves to winning the U.S. Naval Airship contract. From this office, Airship Industries presides over an organization which spans four continents and designs the world's most advanced lighter-than-aircraft. The company's design, production, and operational expertise is already firmly established, and its application of the most advanced aerospace technology to lighter-than-air aviation is already proven. Uh, it's important we convince the customer that we have you know, a really strong grip on this program, that it isn't something that's just wishy-washy drifting along. So we've got finite decision points here that is not in blue. This is the big decision point here, which is the, um, the U.S. Navy go-ahead, uh, when they've appointed the contractor. And then we enter the, the mainstream program, but we've already done a lot of the groundwork, which I think is what gives us a bigger target than I do. Sentinel's design definition is implemented into the computer network by CAD workstations. Once onto the computer network, the basic design is then transferred to various individual technical departments. Typically, there are over 23,000 nodal points on the airship, where aerodynamic load distribution and stress is calculated at one hundredth of a second intervals during any flight maneuver or gust encounter. This facility enables fast and accurate stress, weight, and aerodynamic studies to be made, with the options to remove primary structure and check for fail-safe design, an essential feature for assessing post-battle damage. A fine mesh finite element model of the loaded structure is then generated using STRAN, a custom design program developed by Airship Industries. The loaded structure is then transferred back to the database, where the distorted shape can be assessed by the design department to highlight the difficulties of interfacing a rigid structure to a flexible envelope. The design loop is finally closed by the inclusion of the distorted geometry into the basic design. Roger, switching topics, uh, I want to um, raise up the ZPG3W uh, case. As you're probably aware, the uh, CNO Executive Board in its deliberations uh, asked uh, the contractors to look at a modern ZPG3W airship as a design point for the proof of concept. And uh, Katie and I, and I think that your staff as well, have examined that in uh, some detail, and we have concerns among ourselves that it does not satisfy some of the key uh, proof objectives that the Naval Airship Program ultimately is to satisfy. One of them is habitability, which gets you to a long-term endurance requirement. It's essential for the crew. And uh, there are other aspects of the program which I think we can all contribute to uh, this one. I'd like to hear your viewpoints on this. Well, I guess in summary, it was ZPG3W. A, it was in its day, 1950s, it was state of the art, but we've now moved on a fair bit. But I think the other, the, the important point is, I mean, it wasn't designed for the mission that the Navy are now talking about. So it was a totally different mission, short endurance, relatively close offshore. Roger, is there anything we can use in the program? What about the, the, the materials that they use for the for the envelope and the seaming technology? Anything there makes sense? I think the answer is no. You've only got to go back about 20 years further, and they're using oxys intestines holding the, the, the gas in. I'm uh, retired Navy Commander Charles Mills, a uh, former airship pilot, commanding officer of a squadron of these ships, CPG-2s and 3Ws. The ZPG-3W environment for a 30-day mission is your question as I understand it. As you know, we flew them normally about 48 to 60 hours. The ship is much too small, much too confined, and too noisy for a 30-day environment. Uh, for 30 days aloft, you would need a larger machine than this. Crew efficiency began to go down. We've run studies on it. I still have them on uh, detection range and percentage of targets detected versus actual percentage of targets. And it held up quite well for about 24 to 36 hours. After that, detection capability began to drop off due to crew fatigue. 
but it's just the physical size of the ship, too small for the job. Lots of things are missing. Showers, air conditioning, uh, comfortable bunks, a area in which the crew can relax and get away from the mission. These things begin to tell uh, after a two or three day period. This ship, as you may or may not know, is really a Donald Douglas or Douglas aircraft designed car that won a competition and then the contract was given to Goodyear to build it. Uh, and this ship was designed as a anti-submarine ship with about a 24 hour mission. When we had need for an early warning ship, the same shell was used and we compacted 24 human beings into it and uh, stretched the mission out to 36 hours and then in the 3W version, by enlarging the envelope and increasing the fuel load, uh, kept it the same crew size but extended the mission even further to 48 to 60 hours. So this ship was really not designed for that length of flight. In my opinion, it would make much more sense to start with a new design for any extended mission. This ship, uh, with the engines that it had and the maximum amount of fuel it was carrying, uh, would have to replenish fairly frequently, at least every other day. And uh, she would require major modifications. It would be much better to design a more efficient new, new design. This is Weeksville, North Carolina, where we construct, build, and operate part of the largest modern fleet of airships in the world. Let's take a closer look at Sentinel, an optimized vehicle which conforms exactly to the requirements of the Naval Airship Program. Firstly, the gondola is constructed from composites. The entire structure is built with radar absorbent materials. It is a true stealth vehicle. And its wide body environment allows the crew to work and live comfortably and efficiently for long periods. Sentinel's gondola is built in a modular form, giving growth capability for P3I, rapid offline assembly time, and reduced jigging costs for the eventual recommended production airship, which is in accordance with the recommendations of the Packard Commission. So the object of the exercise is to get that parallel lid body section complete, but also we'll have flight deck mock-up. This is one of the options for the cockpit, which is designed to the highest ergonomic principles, with displays tethered specifically to the airship task. The artificial intelligence avionics and flight deck design are identical to those which would be installed in the recommended production craft, again in accordance with the Packard Commission. This will reduce manpower used in crewing the craft to an absolute minimum, while ensuring maximum operational efficiency. Airship Industries and Westinghouse TCOM have unrivaled experience in the practical application of envelope technology. They have perfected envelope technology using high strength, long life, low weight, maintenance free materials with a proven life in excess of 10 years. The twin diesel cruise engines are very fuel efficient particularly at low power settings, crucial to operators organic to the fleet. At exceptionally high power to weight ratio and vibration-free performance at all power settings. This arrangement provides the minimum propulsion system plus fuel weight for missions in excess of two days. Their water recovery systems ensure up to 72 hours permanence on zone at altitude. The system also reduces exhaust temperature, producing a very low infrared signature. A dash speed of 95 knots is provided by the General Electric CT7 turboprop. Sentinel's vectored thrust performs as an active flying control, allowing vertical takeoff and landing and true hover capability. With these benefits, Sentinel can easily use high heaviness factors. 
Fiber optic primary controls give Sentinel autopilot, auto stabilization, enhanced maneuverability, and freedom from electromagnetic interference and EMP effects. From the completion of the funded studies in September 1985, airship industries have continued to fund the development of Sentinel, including a heavy investment in tooling and hardware. We are now in a position well advanced in design definition, and we can build a prototype within 30 months, which will have almost total commonality with the recommended production craft. This prototype will answer each of the four vital issues that the Navy identified. Weatherability, vulnerability, cost, and battle preparedness. It is only with such a vehicle that the naval airship concept can be proved. This is the case for Sentinel.